To all who shall see these presents, greetings. Ruck Dog here with another unboxing. It's been a little while since I've done one of these, but I was inspired to do so by the recent arrival of this Littoral Commander Indo Pacific. Now, this is a game I have been looking forward to getting for a long time. This is somewhat unique in that well, somewhat unique for my collection anyway, in that it's a game which are, got its start as an actual teaching tool for active duty United States Marines. Uh, this game was created by Sebastian Bay, who we interviewed on the podcast not too long ago, so I'll throw a link to that episode in the notes for this video, so you can check that out if you haven't already. And it is published by the Deeds Foundation, uh, which is a nonprofit that does great things for helping with, uh, well, as I say, various educational endeavors. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into it. We're going to dig in and see what we've got here. I have been eagerly awaiting this game, as I said, and it's been fun watching a lot of other folks who uh, backed this game, sort of like a crowdfunding campaign the Deeds Foundation did. Uh, get theirs over the last week or so. My copy actually arrived a couple days ago, but I was holding off until I had the time to film a proper unboxing video. So let's go ahead and get our shrink wrap off here. Set that aside, and we'll go ahead and see what we've got under the hood. This box feels very heavy. I can tell it's very uh, densely packed. All right, so right off the top here, we've got our rules manual, and uh, it's a pretty good length here. 48 pages, it says, so nice thick manual. A separate scenario book. And we've got, looks like about uh, 15 pages, a number of different scenarios. Uh, so that'll be fun to dig into. And then uh, we've got our maps. <laughs> oh man, look at these guys. We'll have to see about uh, getting these uh, flattened out. So these are uh, good sized maps. Um, all total, it looks like these are roughly, oh, about roughly uh, 30 by 24 inches, uh, so good size. And you can see it's a hex grid representing various geographical uh, regions. In this case, we're looking at the, uh, the Straits of Malacca here with uh, Singapore. And I'll show that right here, sort of in the uh, upper center of the map. Strategic choke points are always going to be a hot spot of activity. <laughs> We've got a, another map here for Luzon Strait, which is up in the Philippines. And of course, the one that uh, always gets a lot of the attention in the media, the Taiwan Strait. Now, there we go. We've got uh, Taiwan and we've got mainland China over here on the side. These maps are feeling uh, pretty nice and heavy. Uh, feels like they should hold up to a decent amount of use. And then we've got the, the Rikus. Which now... All right, so uh, other components. We've got lots and lots of wooden cubes. We've got uh, some wooden markers here. And of course, we've got some uh, lovely uh, dice here. Good selection of D20s. Looks like four reds and four blues. And then lots and lots of cards. We've got uh, event cards. We've got, uh, so this is uh, the uh, generic symbol that uh, they went for with the U.S. Marines. It was actually funny watching the development of this game. Sebastian would post various things about it on Twitter during the course of the development. As it turns out, the various logos that, you know, the U.S. Marines use are actually copyrighted, trademarked. So he couldn't use those. He had to come up with some lookalikes kind of on his own. There we go. That's the uh, equivalent sort of lookalike for the uh, People's Liberation Army and Navy. All right. Now we've got uh, a couple of uh, dashboards here for various units. So this should give you some, this is good because it should give you some idea of the scale the game's being played at. Here we have a tank platoon, and here we have a uh, basically one card for a destroyer. So you see that we're still sort of getting down to that level of individual units as far as the representation of various formations on the game board are concerned. And to be fair, we've got quite a few of those. That's a, that's a rather impressive uh, selection of units there. <laughs> 
Then we have a whole bunch of, uh, well, we've got a couple of submarine operations trackers, which I'm a fan of being a submarine guy myself. A couple of quick reference sheets, actually three quick reference sheets to help with players learning the rules, and then a whole bunch of die cut counters. Not, not tons, but a, a decent little selection of die cut counters here. And of course you see the logos on the back side. Uh, these look like they're going to be pretty easy to pop out, and sure enough, they come right out. So these are very nicely printed, very nicely die cut. Uh, so pretty good quality components there. All right, so that is pretty much what we've got in the box. We've got our little unit trackers, we've got our markers, we've got our various cards. We've got all of our wooden components and of course our dice and then of course all of the other printed materials including an impressive array of maps. Now um, as, I, as I look at this, the one thing that will require some prep work is you'll probably be well suited to lay these mats out and get them to flatten out some before you actually play on them. Uh, the creases are unavoidable, but it is definitely a workable solution and uh, you know probably an economical one. And the benefit of going with this type of map is that you get to have, what is it, uh, one, two, three, four different maps in the game instead of just probably one if they had to go with like an actual mounted board. So honestly, I'm okay with that uh, that compromise. So there you have it, Littoral Commander. <laughs> so as I said at the very beginning, the box for Littoral Commander is quite hefty. And now that we have gotten the box open and gotten everything out of it, you can see why. It is just chock-a-block full of stuff. You've got lots of very nice components here. Very happy with the, the printing and the graphic design. I mean, here's some of the various uh, cards for... Uh, the uh, the game and you can see that the design and the printing is is very nice very high quality and of course this is not a surprise for me because I have been following the development of this game for quite a while uh, there's been lots and lots of various uh, sort of work in progress posts that Sebastian and the Deeds Foundation have put up on Twitter and various other places and so it has been a fun journey. Uh, well, it's been fun to watch their journey, I should say, as they work to make this uh, game a reality and expand it beyond just the sort of the active duty military audience that it has previously been targeted at. Uh, so this is not going to be the last time we talk about the game on this channel, I am sure. There will be hopefully an opportunity where I can do sort of a video turn by turn playthrough. And I'm also going to end up doing a review of this game for the podcast. So stay tuned for that. That should be coming up here in the not too distant future. And finally, this is something that I plan on spending some time with for a while in terms of not just sort of playing it once and putting it on the shelf. I've actually got some plans to introduce this into my own <laughs> work environment as sort of a, a training tool for some of the folks I serve with, so that should be fun as well. All of that will, of course, be talked about eventually here on YouTube and on the Man Battle Stations forum and on the Man Battle Stations podcast. So if you are not subscribed or a member of any of those things, then again, links are in the description, and I will hope to see you there. And uh, that will about do it for the Littoral Commander unboxing.